Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, today the church celebrates the 14th Tuesday in Ordinary Time, and today the church remembers the martyrs of Gorkum, Holland. From 1522 to 1572, Nicholas Pieck, Jerome Weirden, Leonard Vichel, Nicholas Jansen, Jeffrey Van Dunyen, John Van Oosterwick, John Van Hornarner, Adrian Van Hilvanbrick, James Lasko, Andrew Wouters, Anthony von Willehead, and Nicasius von Hesse were members of the Franciscan Friary at Gorkum under Nicholas Pieck when it was attacked by a Calvinist Protestant mob and the friars were made prisoners. They were then sent to Briel, where, despite a letter from the Prince of Order Orange ordering their release, all of them were slain. So to all the martyrs of Gorkum Holland, for your witness to the faith even unto death. We ask you to please, please pray for us that we may have the same strength if we are ever so tried. Let's begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Lord, bless us with the wisdom to praise you in spirit and in truth, so by following your holy will we may gain eternal salvation. Amen. My dear brothers and sisters, let us take a moment, confess our sins to God in ways that we have failed Him and our neighbor in thought, word, deed, and omission, so that we may worthily participate in this holy sacrifice. Please now make an examination of your conscience. Let's say together the second form of the Confidior found on page 66. I confess to Almighty God in the presence of the Blessed Virgin Mary, all the saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, that I have sinned through my own fault, in my thoughts, in my words, in what I have done or failed to do. I ask the Blessed Virgin Mary, all the saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me, to the Lord our God. For your penance, I would ask you to say, one Our Father and one Hail Mary. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. And may our Lord Jesus Christ absolve you, and with his authority vested in me, I absolve you from all of your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Ah, sinful nation, people laden with wickedness, evil race, corrupt children, they have forsaken the Lord, spurned the Holy One of Israel, apostatized. The Lord is with you when you are with Him, and if you seek Him, He will be present to you. But if you abandon Him, He will abandon you. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Kyrie eleison, Kyrie eleison, Christ eleison, Christ eleison, Kyrie eleison, Kyrie eleison. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, you bless those who seek you and punish those who forsake you. Grant us the grace never to reject your Son, for in him alone do we find our salvation. We ask this through the same Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Hosea. Thus says the Lord, they made kings in Israel, but not by my authority. They established princes, but without my approval. With their silver and gold, they made idols for themselves to their own destruction. Cast away your calf, O Samaria. My wrath is kindled against them. How long will they be unable to attain innocence in Israel? 
the work of an artisan, no God at all, destined for the flames, such is the calf of Samaria. When they sow the wind, they shall reap the whirlwind. The stalk of grain that forms no ear can yield no flower. Even if it could, strangers would swallow it. When Ephraim made many altars to expiate sin, his altars became occasions of sin. Though I write for him my many ordinances, they are considered as a stranger's. Will they offer sacrifice, immolate flesh, and eat it? The Lord is not pleased with them. He shall re still remember their guilt and punish their sins. They shall return to Egypt. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our response is, the house of Israel trusts in the Lord. The house of Israel trusts in the Lord. Our God is in heaven. Whatever he wills, he does. Their idols are silver and gold, the handiwork of men. The house of Israel trusts in the Lord. They have, many, they have mouths, but speak not. They have eyes, but see not. They have ears, but hear not. They have noses, but smell not. The house of Israel trusts in the Lord. They have hands, but feel not. They have feet, but walk not. Their makers shall be like them, everyone that trusts in them. The house of Israel trusts in the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia. I am the good shepherd, says the Lord. I know my sheep, and my sheep know me. Alleluia, alleluia. May Almighty God cleanse my heart and my lips, that I may worthily proclaim your holy gospel. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew. A demoniac who could not speak was brought to Jesus. And when the demon was driven out, the mute man spoke. The crowds were amazed and said, Nothing like this has ever been seen in Israel. But the Pharisees said, He drives out demons by the prince of demons. Jesus went around to all the towns and villages, teaching in their synagogues, proclaiming the gospel of the kingdom, and curing every disease and illness. At the sight of the crowds, his heart was moved with pity for them, because they were troubled and abandoned, like sheep without a shepherd. Then he said to his disciples, the harvest is abundant, but the laborers are few. So ask the master of the harvest to send out laborers for his harvest. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise be to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Oh, my dear brothers and sisters in Christ, here's some very interesting readings today. The first one, from the book of the prophet Hosea, continue from the book from yesterday. And we hear about idolatry. And it references the calf in Samaria, which is definitely a reference to the golden calf of the Old Testament. But throughout history, if we look at the history in the Old Testament, we can see that cyclically, the Jews would turn away from God and back to pagan idol worship, which was common in the whole area at the time. And that's the thing. If we take our eyes off of God, off of His Son and the Holy Spirit, we have to go somewhere. There is a void that is inside each and every one of us that only God can fill. And if we don't allow God to fill that void, nature abhors a vacuum. So something else will come in and fill it, and it will not be of God. And those things we call idols, false gods. We see that throughout our world today. Now, don't get me wrong. I don't see very many people in the United States worshiping golden calves. Okay? That's not, I think we're a little bit beyond that because we have the Bible and we know that's not something we should do. 
but we do make our own idols. We do. Some people make it the earth. Earth worship. It comes under the guise of population control sometimes and pushing of things that is not, are not of God, such as abortion, euthanasia, things of that nature. For some, it's money. Anything for the sake of the almighty dollar or euro or whatever. Again, doing things that are not of God to get that fulfillment that will never come into that void. For some, it's self, narcissism. For some, truly, it is Satan. For some, may even be government. Democracy. And by, by the way, make no mistake about it, the United States has never been a democracy. We're a representative republic, so let's leave that there. And doing things to protect democracy. And big, big business comes in. We look at the military industrial complex. We've had, ever since 1950, an unending cycle of war. It's very few breaks. Look at maybe the mid-90s up until September 11th. It's about the only time, the only time. And that is fueled by profit. Who profits? Those who make the weapons, those who make the ammunition, those who make even medical supplies, which brings us to the pharmaceutical industrial complex. Have you ever noticed, have you ever noticed, if you're watching TV, listening to the radio, <coughs> anything where there's commercials, more and more and more, what is it dominated by? Different pills, potions, injections that we can get to help us, be them vaccines, be them curatives, be them therapeutics. There's an, an explosion an absolute explosion of pharmaceuticals. Why? Why? Because there's money to be made in those. A lot of money. And here's the catch. If we take a combination of pills, and I'm not you know, talking about life-saving things that's different, but a combination of chemicals put in our body, our bodies our systems, and that throws off the system. So it will cause what? Side effects. So we take some more pharmaceuticals to get rid of those side effects, and then more side effects. And it's a constant loop that does what? Feeds the ph pharmaceutical industrial complex. Health can also be a god. So why? Why do all these things happen? Well, because we have taken God out of our equation. As a country, as a nation, as a people, we look at every single church, every single Catholic, Orthodox church, high Protestant, numbers keep going down. Because God is disappearing from our world, and he will not allow that to happen for very much longer. And that brings us to our gospel today where Jesus, at the sight of the crowds, his heart was moved with pity for them because they were troubled and abandoned like sheep without a shepherd. How often, my brothers and sisters, do we look out at the world? Do we look out at all of those who we love? And they are like sheep without a shepherd. It says, the harvest is abundant, but the laborers are few. Now, were there not an abundance of scribes, Pharisees, rabbis in Jerusalem and Israel at the time? And yet, they were like sheep without a shepherd. The harvest is abundant, but the laborers are few because they were not true har laborers. So that's the master of the harvest to send out laborers for his harvest. His harvest. 
God's heart is. God the Father who sent his son to teach us how to help those who are like sheep without a shepherd. Now, yes, we should pray for an increase in vocations. We need that in our church for sure, for sure. But we, even non-ordained, can be shepherds. If we listen to and heed the call of our Lord, if we teach the truth and we stand up for the truth, we stand up against those things that are leading people away from God, constant wars, killing of babies and elderly and feeble, misuse of the gift of sex. If we start being courageous and standing up for the truth that comes, has been taught by our Lord Jesus Christ, then we, we become shepherds in a way, shepherding people back maybe to the church to lead them to good people who will bring them to our Lord and even bring them ourselves to the Lord. Why? Why do I do this day in and day out as often as I can? Celebrate daily Mass. One, because there is no greater privilege. Two, to commune with all of those in heaven who have gone before us. Three, to help bring as many people as possible back to our Lord. That is our goal, our number one goal. To be shepherds to those who have none, to bring those who are being led astray back to the true shepherd, our G Lord Jesus Christ. That is our call. That is our reason for being exiled here on this earth away from our heavenly home. Because if we fail consciously at that, not from lack of effort, but if we do not do not do that. If we do not do the labor which we are called to by our Lord in whatever circumstances He has placed us, then we fail. And we will go with the evil one whom we desire to serve. But if we tr stay true to Jesus and strive to lead as many as possible back to Him, our reward in heaven will be great. So let us always, 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 firstly, avoid idolatry in all of its forms, help others recognize and avoid it, and finally, be like shepherds to the lost sheep around us, bringing them home to the church and more importantly to God and His Son, Jesus Christ. In the name of the Father, of the Son, of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us humbly approach our Heavenly Father <coughs> and ask that He hear and answer our prayers of petition. Our response is, Lord, hear our prayer. For Prime Bishop Anthony, Father Senior Charles, and all pastors, that they may be blessed with the grace and strength needed to continue to shepherd God's people back to Him. We pray to the Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. For peace in our world, that God will turn hearts away from war, violence in the military and pharmaceutical industrial complexes and protect the most vulnerable among our populations from conception to natural death. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our parish, that the Holy Spirit may move and motivate all of us to spread the word of God to the world. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all travelers and vacationers, that their journeys will be safe and their time away be occasions for rest and refreshment. We pray to the Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. For all the sick, especially June Klinkevich and those in our parish prayer list, that the Lord in his mercy will be close to them with his healing power and tender love, we pray to the Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. For all of our own needs and intentions, we hold deep in the silence of our hearts. We pray in a special way today for those affected by the hurricane barrel yesterday as they begin their recovery. We pray to the Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. 
for all of our beloved deceased, those who will die today, especially Helmut Erdman, who passed away this past Saturday morning, that they may live in the light of God's love for all eternity. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God, our Father, as you answer the prayers we have presented to you today, both spoken and unspoken, grant us the strength and courage to answer your call to holiness. We ask all these things through your Son, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Do you not think that a much worse punishment is due the one who has contempt for the Son of God, considers unclean the covenant blood by which he was consecrated, and insults the Spirit of grace? Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. Through your goodness, we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made. May it become for us the bread of life. By the mystery of this wine and water, may we come to share in the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, through your goodness we have this wine to offer. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, may it become our spiritual drink. Lord God, we ask you to receive us and be pleased with the sacrifice we offer you with humble and contrite hearts. Come, Holy Spirit, and bless this sacrifice which we have prepared for the glory of your holy name. Lord, wash away my iniquity. Cleanse me from my sin. Receive this offering, most holy trinity, which we make in memory of the passion, resurrection, ascension of our Lord Jesus Christ, and in honor of the Blessed Virgin Mary and all the saints. May they whose memory we honor on earth intercede for us in heaven. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice from my hands for the praise and glory of his name for our good, for the benefit of his holy church. Lord our God, be pleased with the gifts we bring to your altar and make them the sacrament of our salvation. We ask this in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Father, all-powerful and ever-living God, we do well always and everywhere to give you thanks to your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Out of love, you called us to life. You give us our daily bread and the bread of life, and by your protection and assistance, you see to our every need. So with trust, we commend our day to your fatherly care. Therefore, with the angels and archangels, with all the saints and the entire church, we lift our hymn of praise to your glory, repeating unceasingly, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might, Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy sacrifice and mass continues with Eucharistic prayer 3, which is found on page 84. We claim you, holy Lord, glorious in power. Your mighty works reveal your wisdom and love. You have formed us in your own image, giving the whole world into our care, so that, in obedience to you, our creator, we might rule and serve all your creatures. When our disobedience took us far from you, you did not abandon us to the power of death. In your mercy, you came to our help so that in seeking you, we might find you. Again and again, you called us into covenant with you, and through the prophets, you taught us to hope for salvation. Gracious God, you loved the world so much that in the fullness of time, you sent your only Son to be our Savior. Incarnate by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, he lived as one of us, yet without sin. To the poor, he proclaimed the good news of salvation. To prisoners, freedom. To the sorrowful, joy. To fulfill your purpose, he gave himself up to death. And rising from the grave, destroyed death and made the whole creation new. 
and that we might live no longer for ourselves, but for Him who died and rose for us. He sent the Holy Spirit, His own first gift for those who believe, to complete His work in the world and to bring to fulfillment the sanctification of all. And the hour had come for Him to be glorified. Having loved His own who were in the world, He loved them to the end. At supper with them, He took bread, and when He given thanks to you, He broke it and gave it to His disciples and said, Take this, all of you, and eat it, for this is my body, which is given for you. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant, which shall be shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. As often as you do this, do it in remembrance of me. We now celebrate the memorial of our redemption, recalling Christ's death and descent among the dead, proclaiming his resurrection and ascension to your right hand, awaiting his coming in glory, and offering to you from the gifts you have given us, this bread and this cup, we praise you and bless you. Together, we praise you, we bless you, we give thanks to you, and we pray to you, Lord our God. We pray that in your goodness and mercy, your Holy Spirit may descend upon us and upon these gifts sanctifying them and showing them to be holy gifts for your holy people. The bread of life and the cup of salvation, the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Grant that all who share this bread and this cup may become one body and one spirit, a living sacrifice in Christ to the praise of your name. Remember your one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church, redeemed by the blood of your Christ. Reveal its unity, guard its faith, and preserve it in peace. Remember Anthony, our Prime Bishop, Charles, our Administrator, and all who minister in your church. Remember all your people and those who seek your truth, especially those affected by Hurricane Barrel and the recovery efforts today. Remember all who have died in the peace of Christ, whose faith is known to you alone, especially Helmut Erdman and all of our friends and family who have passed. Bring them into the place of eternal joy and light and grant that we may find our inheritance with the Blessed Virgin Mary, with our ancestors in faith, with the prophets, apostles, and martyrs, with the martyrs whose memory we keep today, and with all the saints who have found favor with you in ages past. We praise you in union with them and give you glory through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, all honor and glory are yours, creator of all in the unity of the Holy Spirit, forever and ever. Amen. On page 95, let us pray together with confidence to the Father in the words our Savior taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil and grant us peace in our day. In your mercy, keep us free from sin and protect us from all anxiety as we wait in joyful hope for the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. The cup of blessing which we bless, is it not a participation in the blood of Christ? The bread which we break. Is it not a participation in the body of Christ? Because there is one bread, we who are many are one body. For we all partake of the one bread. May the union of divinity and humanity in Jesus Christ bring us sanctification and eternal life. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, I leave you peace. My peace I give you. Do not look at our sins, but on the faith of your church. and Grant us the peace and unity of your kingdom where you live forever and ever. 
Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. On you stay, qui tolis peccata mundi, miserere nobis. <coughs> On you stay, qui tolis peccata mundi, miserere nobis. On you stay, qui tolis peccata mundi, dona nobis pace. Let's say together the first communion prayer found on page 97 if you're following along. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, by the will of the Father and the work of the Holy Spirit, your death brought life to the world. By your holy body and blood, free me from all my sins and from every evil. Keep me faithful to your teaching and never let me be parted from you. I will take the bread of heaven and call upon the name of the Lord. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word and I shall be healed. May the body of Christ bring me to everlasting life. May the blood of Christ bring me to everlasting life. Please join me now in the act of spiritual communion. Most loving Jesus, I adore you in the most blessed sacrament in which you are truly present. I love you above all things, and I long for you in my soul. Since I cannot receive you sacramentally, I ask you to come spiritually into my heart and heal my soul, embrace you, and unite myself with you. May I never be separated from you. Inflame my heart with the fire of your love, my Lord and Savior. Amen. Lord, may I possess with a pure heart that which I have taken as food. May the gift I have received bring me healing and strength now and forever. And whoever rejects me, rejects the one who sent me. Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, help us who have shared your body and blood to know you through the work you do in our midst. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. May the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit come upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please join me now as we go into spiritual battle with the prayer of St. Michael. Holy Michael, the archangel, defend us in battle. Be our safeguard against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And to you, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who wander through the world seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Show me now in prayer for peace with the prayer of St. Francis. Lord, make me an instrument of your peace. <clears throat> Where there is hatred, let me sow love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light. And where there is sadness, joy. O divine Master, grant that I may not so much seek to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love. For it is in giving that we receive, it is in pardoning that we are pardoned, it is in dying that we are born to eternal life. Amen. My dear brothers and sisters in Christ, thank you so much for joining us for Holy Mass today. Pray that you can join us tomorrow and Thursday at 9 a.m. Central Daylight Time, God willing. And Saturday at 5 p.m. No, no Mass on Saturday. No Mass on Saturday because of the internment of our pre former pastor, Bishop Jerry Rafalco. Sunday at 9 a.m. Central Daylight Time for the 15th Sunday in Ordinary Time. So we pray that you have a wonderful day. Take care of yourselves. Take care of each other. Stay dry. Remain in a state of grace and fight evil wherever you find it and spread joy and the word of God wherever you go.
praise the Lord, my soul. Let fire and rain give praise to him. To him he who is merciful, slow to judge. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul.